Another great basic drawing skill in Flash is gradients. So let's see how we can work with gradients. And what I will do is create kind of a background to something we might be making in Flash. So let's go and create a new document. And I'll save it. And what I'll do is come over to our rectangle tool and I'll select it. And down at the bottom of our tool list, I'll make sure I'm in object drawing mode so that button should be depressed. Generally speaking, unless you're merging fills, you probably want to draw in object drawing mode. Now for our fill is where we'll start a gradient. So if we go into the fill color chips, down at the bottom there are eight chips to give you starter gradients and then you can work from there. So the first one is a linear, left to right. Then there's four radials and two stripes. We'll go with the grayscale linear, left and right. And we'll be able to modify it. No stroke. So we'll click on the stroke colors. And over here, we'll turn the colors off with the off button for color. Then on the stage, try your best to get a rectangle close to the size of the stage. And if you're not quite perfect, then over in the Properties window for the rectangle, we can change the x-coordinates to 0, the y-coordinates to 0, and then the height and width. The width is 550, and the height is 400. Those are the default widths and heights for the stage. I'll just grab the Selection tool over here, and you can see we have a object uh, shape, which has got a grayscale from left to right. Now we want to modify that, and so how we do that is we go into the Color panel, so we go to Window and open up the Color Window. And here it is. It's got quite a few controls in it. And one of the things that you might want to learn, you'll learn about it is it's very easy to be making changes here and it doesn't know what you're changing. So it's either changing the next thing you're going to use, the next tool you're going to use, or it's changing something selected. So you might want to double check by clicking on the shape you just drew and then we think that this will be working on that and we'll see as we start changing things. So one of the things we'll change right away is the type and we'll go from linear to radial. And if you see the change over here you know that this is now synchronized with the selected shape. And then we'll go back to linear and then you can go to solid which turns out to be white and back to linear. Now the actual colors that you see are for lin for gradients are based down here at the bottom of this window. If you go to solid, then the colors are just basically for the background color. And so we can just see we're just going to affect the white here if we were going to make some changes. So let's go back to gradients and do the linear. That'll get us a good starting point. All right, so on the left side, we start with a white. And on the right side, we start with a black. So that's what these two color wells are down here and they can be dragged left or right and change the starting point of their color and you can change their color too. Uh, one of the easiest ways is just to click into it double click it and bring up the color chips. You got a gradient going this way. If you want to add some colors just click somewhere along here and you can see the mouse pointer has a plus to indicate add and when you click it will give you a color that's exactly the one that is at that point in the gradient and then you can change that if you like. If you want to get two colors the same, what you do is go to the one that you'd like to copy and take the hex number up here or you can take the three RGB numbers, whichever is more convenient, and then duplicate them. I'll just copy the hex number, and then I'll click on the other color, and I'll just paste over the number that was on the first one, and then press the Enter key to make it take. And so now we have the same color going from the second color to the third color in our gradient, our linear gradient. And we go to the last color chip and change it to white. And I'll take the two middle ones and bring them in close to the end. And you might see some dimensionality to the gradient that we're working with. Now let's suppose we'd like to have this from top to bottom. So that's what comes in handy there is the gradient 
tool. So we come over here to this panel where we had the free transform tool and there is the gradient transform tool. We click on that and we select the object that we want to change the gradient on and we get a rotational handle. And a width or height handle depending on how you want to look at it. It's actually the distance. And so I turned it uh, so that it's going from top to bottom. And it's not covering the whole shape. So we actually have a, a, an area here where it's just a solid color. It's the last color that you see on the left and the right of our gradient and that's what's happening here and there. If I deselect you'll see that uh, actually smoothly go into the gradient. I'll go back and select it and then I'll continue changing the distance between the starting and ending point so that it's close to the actual width. You can go beyond that if you like and then of course we won't see the gradient but sometimes you'll have gradients in between and you'll have an angle and based on the angle that's what your particular effect was in my case, I'm just going from top to bottom, which is a basic thing everybody asks how to do. How do I get the gradient to go from top to bottom? So we got the gradient in from top to bottom, and that gives us a basic idea of working with this. You could start ahead of time and develop your gradient inside of the color panel and then go to your tool and then select uh, and then start drawing, or I prefer just to, to do it this way and to use the defaults that are in there. Now, uh, we'll work a little bit more with gradients in another video, but this gives you a good starting point. So this is a way to create some dimensional items that are inside of your movie and basically make things look pretty nice.